presentation for managing MSMEs for growth. As I have been uh, advised, it is about 25 minutes plus five minutes uh, question and answer, if any. Um, the subject is managing MSMEs for growth. The entrepreneurship, which uh, most of us have been talking about, is innovative change through new venture creation. It is the creation of new goods and services, processes, technologies, markets, and ways the organizing that offers alternative with the intention of better meeting people's needs and improving their lives. That is the entrepreneurship concept. Now, what I have found, you know, in terms, and I have given an, uh, you know, example. What is the entrepreneur journey? It starts with idea startup which I compare with playing, building cricket, everybody's playing. So everybody gets into the, uh, you know, entrepreneurial mode by starting some uh, small idea in his own way. Then comes the tiny and the micro stage, which is, uh, I would say, a club cricket, where somebody is able to move forward. Third is small scale, which is a playing cricket at the state level. Fourth is medium level, medium scale industry, which is at the national level. And large scale is where, you know, you go uh, public and uh, have a large uh, international uh, market also. Then there is a international uh, level you are playing the cricket, which is uh, cricket or, uh, you know, your ODI or whatever we are playing. Now, this is the example I have given. And this we will be following all through the discussion in terms of the entire journey and where the things are coming to a standstill, what the issues these people are facing in their growth journey. What is the business objective? Now, it is also linked with the uh, question, you know, which was being discussed. Every business must have a vision of creating long-term sustainable business. And that is the core of any business philosophy or any entrepreneurial journey. And for this, what is important is you must opt have optimum utilization of resources. I'll give you an example of Shri Cements, which I've been monitoring and I've been watching that. They have been consistently operating at more than 100% of their capacity, 100 to 115, 120% kind of a thing. And you see the results in the market and in their bottom line. Second is fair distribution to the stakeholders. Any business, if it has to survive and grow, in the long term, they must ensure that they are having fair distribution to all stakeholders, which includes your buyers, sellers, employees, financiers, and everybody, including society at large. You have to have a fair distribution. Third is compliances of the law of the land. Whichever country you are operating, right now in India, it's a very, very important thing. Hence, performance plus credibility. Last two helps you in building a credibility. If performance plus credibility, which is good governance, if you have that, you are in, you are 100% sure of success in your business in the long term. Besides, as I have been noticing for last few years, almost a decade, the business ecosystem is moving towards tremendous transparency and increasing good governance emphasis. And this is the core. This is where every business has to focus if they have to create a long-term sustainable business. Now, how the focus changes? When you are a startup or a micro unit, your focus is basically on product and service validation whether your product and service has a proper market, whether it is profitable or not. And most important, if you have to grow in future, you have to also look at the possibility of product innovation and market identification and growing the market. As you grow to a small business, you are preparing for growth. And when you go to a medium scale, medium size, you are getting ready for scale up. You want to increase your business 
to a next level or to a higher level and that is where the focus keeps on changing of the entrepreneur and the business michael gerber he is supposed to be the father of the small businesses in usa and today even at the age of 85 plus or something he's still uh, very active he is defining the role of an entrepreneur he is not really interested in doing the work he is interested in creating the way the company operates in that regard the entrepreneur is an inventor he or she loves to invent but does not love to manufacture or sell or distribute what he or she is inventing the focus is on the role of the entrepreneur what the entrepreneur is supposed to do in one of the speeches kishore miani of pantaloon and big bazaar he said very clear that my role is purely as an inventor i decide where which direction the business will go the ceo is there to execute what the board or the people are deciding and see that the results are achieved narayan murthy also mentioned in one of the speeches at uh, imc bse uh, and nmims forum that entrepreneur must have a excellent business proposal which can be articulated and in an understandable manner in one sentence he must be very clear about the market differentiation what is he going to focus upon and what is the cost benefit he must create a complementary skills team which is very important when the business is growing which i am going to deal with little later he also mentioned that when they were doing you know just getting uh, organized into business in 1980 81 at that time there were 13 contemporaries which were competing with them and all of them virtually left behind in, in just a decade or so because they could not create a team and he also emphasized that value system leading by example walk the talk is the most important for the role because everybody in the organization is going to consider you as a role model and they will try to follow you so the focus is maximizing shareholder value through trust accountability and fairness now what i have found in my uh, uh, almost 25 years of uh, dealing with smes is that growth stages can be divided ideally into two phases phase 1 and phase 2 phase 1 is taking turnover up to around 50 crores or maybe around 40 people uh, employee team or something phase 2 is going beyond 50 crores maybe up to 500 crores as a medium scale and then you are getting into the very large uh, you know market maybe in national international and all that which is a last scale you go with this so this phase and phase 2 is the focus of, the, of our discussion phase 1 characteristic what happens in phase 1 is that the owner or the entrepreneur on his or her own steam they are the leading the entire business and the whole business is you know uh, rotating around their own uh, personality and uh, working style second line is virtually missing there is no second line in the business third is for their further future growth entrepreneur versus businessman entrepreneur are people with tremendous vision and they want to grow the business for the benefit of the society because that's how they can survive and grow the business in the long term whereas businessman is working for his own wants rather than the business needs and that is where the issue comes up personal versus business the entrepreneur particularly in the initial stages looks more the entire business as his personal wealth and that is how he is running he is not willing to take or give any accountability i have seen most of the people uh, not willing to be accountable in fact one of the very large company for which i did uh, two assignments um, turnover is around 1500 to 2000 crores he is not willing to go public for the simple reason he says that accountability increases and i have to be very transparent in doing the business 
Last but not the least is the crisis management. The whole business is being managed through the crisis management, day in and day out. Two things which I would like to mention. Uh, if you want to get something from the film, Guru shows what is the passion of an entrepreneur, where the business is being led. Another movie is Robin Singh, which says, says how the business can be grown. Theory X and Theory Y. People who are into the small business, they are a very strong propagator of Theory X, which has an ideal basic philosophy that people don't want to work. They need to be driven to work. Whereas Theory Y, they believe that people basically want to be recognized, they want to work, and given a right environment, they will be really be doing a good job. And these are the people who really take business to the next level in a big way and, and goes very fast. Phase two characteristic. Phase two, when you are going 50 plus crore, what are the kind of characteristics which are visible? And what are the preconditions of that particular phase for going to that? First is, you have to move from one to team. The business which was being run by an individual must move to the team working. He has to build the team. Crisis to plan. Instead of managing by crisis, the business has to move into the planned way of business. And my favorite, favorite quote is, businesses don't plan to fail, but they fail to plan. Third thing is that they must build accountability. As the team is growing, as you are moving from one to team, you have to increase the accountability. Fourth is business performance and credibility. You have to ensure that your business performance and credibility, which I mentioned earlier, is established so that people trust you more and more and they are willing to stand by you in all your ventures and the uh, thing which you initiate. Ad hoc to inform decision making. Your decision making has to be based on informed information for which you ought to have a highly integrated MIS system. Businesses processes should be in place and you have to move from individual to an institution. You have to ensure that you are going to leave behind a big legacy. Just see the way Tata's are running, Infosys is running, you know, all multinationals, companies and all that. They are creating an institution. If you want to remain small, then you are taking it as an individual business and you are not creating an institution. What are the SME owners' limitations? First is that they are mostly technocrats. It is driven by technical and marketing considerations, which are critical to the business. They have a lot of resource constraints. Support functions are normally missing, like HR, your accounts and finance, IT uh, management. All these things are basically missing. Balancing their supply chain management has a lot of issues. They are not able to uh, organize it in a proper manner. And that results in loss of business and reputation. It's basically owner and business centric. There is a huge gap between the owner and the second line. So the responsibility falls more and more on the owner. They are, the owner is too close to the point of action, which is operations and planning. And as a result, since they are concentrating on operations, planning is not being addressed. Impact of liberalization and globalization. This is a very big issue. What has happened earlier, the profits were managed by increasing the uh, selling price. Today, you have to manage your cost, what some of the uh, people said earlier. Attracting and retaining the talent is a major issue for all MSMEs. And SMEs, as they start growing, they have to attract the right talent. Now, this is something which I find is a major problem as far as the uh, MSME growth is concerned. In any business, ideally, the strategic management, which is basically focusing on long-term plans and planning, should occupy 70 to 85 percent of your time. Tactical management, which is basically functional integrational integration, 
which should take around 20 to 10 20 percent kind of a time and operational management shouldn't take more than 10 percent of the time which is focused on the day-to-day -day activities kind of a thing unfortunately what happens and this i'm telling from one of the case studies you know which recently i've been uh, advising them the strategic management takes only five to ten percent of that time tactical management takes hardly 15 20 percent which is the process integration but most of the time is spent at the operational level in marketing production purchase and accounts which is their core activity where they keep on spending the time and as a result the business is just moving between 15 20 25 crores not able to grow beyond that now as you grow as the business is growing from a startup to the large scale medium scale and large scale the management skills of the owner has to keep pace with it and this is what i observe that unfortunately it is not taking shape it is not taking place the owners are not able to cope up with the way they should learn the management skills and as a result the business growth is hampered what is the paradigm shift when you go from phase one to phase two your approach as a owner has to change paradigm shift really means that focus on growth you have to ensure that as a business owner your focus is on growth second business model market and innovation planning how you are accurately planning and monitoring it is very key to your growth in the long term management skills as a owner when you are shifting from phase one to phase two your role is changing dramatically and you must focus on management skills that what is your role as a owner and as a person who is driving the business financial literacy and financial management over my 20 plus years 25 years of experience in sme i find that this is a huge issue as far as most of the smes and msmes are concerned team building you have to have complementary skills and you have to move from theory x to theory y understand that everybody gets motivated when you are giving the right working environment and the right uh, support attracting and retaining talent in the context of earlier becomes very important outsourcing this is one area where smes need to focus because of the constraints of resources they are not in a position to attract the right talent because the kind of uh, remuneration and the packages which are offered by the large corporates they cannot offer that and as a result they have to outsource the talents on a contract basis and there are specific reasons for it for why it should be done and how it can be done vision for msme the msme minister gadkari when he was there he said that the share in gdp should increase from 30 to 40 percent share in export should increase from 48 to 60 percent number of startups which were 400 in 2014 are increasing to 7000 in 2022 now it's a phenomenal jump and in the context of the discussion that we had on frugality i'll discuss something in the next slide there are fantastic opportunities the ecosystem is supporting the uh, business growth and the entrepreneurship we are number three in creating unicorns in the world and in the times to come i expect that this figure will be go going going to a very large number and i won't be surprised if we go to number one the foreign funds are flowing in in a big way uh, to support the uh, unicorns and the other startups ventures and all that now this is what i was trying to say when uh, the this uh, discussion was there on uh, the topic after all these things were coming today in last one week 
uh, there has been lot of focus in the news. What has happened in the past, the funding has been very easy and a lot of people have been getting tons of money from the from abroad, either in private equity or venture capital or through other sources in, uh, in terms of equity and all. Uh, and we have got number of examples where the business models have not been able to support. And in this context, when Unicorn and uh, all these uh, startup discussions were going on, Nara and Murthy suggested, and day before yesterday, the startups are focusing more on the cost now. And Nara and Murthy said very clearly that you have to have a PSPD model, which is predictability of revenues. You must focus whether your revenues are going to continue. Ola and Uber today are facing a huge issue. Oyo, which was considered to be one of the, uh, you know, uh, very big uh, business success has a lot of issues today. Uh, sustainability of business is the second one. You have to ensure that when you are predicting the, your revenues, your sustainability also comes along with that. You have to sustain the business. As I mentioned in the uh, earlier uh, slides, creating a sustainable long-term business is the basic focus of any business. And that is where sustainability, you are not creating a business for one or two years or something or three years. You are creating a business which will last for maybe decades. And for that, it is very important that profitability and cost control as I mentioned, in a changing business and economic environment, we are required to focus on the cost control. Today, market pricing is not in the hands of most of the businesses. And as a result, cost controls become very important. And that is where today's discussion on frugality is very important, how you really need to control the cost and what kind of a, a where you need to spend you really need to spend, which will give you long-term returns. And where you have to cut the cost, you have to cut the cost. And uh, certain small uh, savings uh, thing, I remember in uh, one of the company where uh, I was there for cost cutting, they reduced the number of T's from three to two for the uh, people in the organization, which I think was absolutely ridiculous. Be risking. You have to see that your business is not dependent on one product. We have seen many companies in the past which had to wind up because they were not able to keep pace with the changing economic environment, business environment, and the way the technologies have been progressing. And you cannot be dependent on one product. And that is where one has to be very careful. Now, with this, I bring three classic examples of successful people in different fields. One is Baba Ramdev. He has created a business empire, if some people say that, which is 20,000 crore plus in a short time. And he doesn't have any formal business education, nothing. Second is SN Goenka. Some of you may be knowing Vipashana. Now he started in 76 and by 2014, when he uh, uh, left this place, you know, uh, left for him, uh, he had already created almost 180 Vipassana centers all over the world. Third is Narendra Modi. There I have taken examples from all different types of uh, things. With the kind of background where everybody was questioning about his uh, ability on the foreign policy, we know where the Indian economy is heading and what kind of uh, examples he has set. Two things, he has created fantastic coordination he is very clear about what type of organization structure has to be there, what type of departments are there, and how they are playing, you know, having a correlation between them. With this, I uh, end my uh, presentation. <laughs>